I don't think that I will really have the, the capacity to speak on behalf of all European institutions, uh, and I think that was the first panel talking quite a lot about that, but I will make some remarks uh, on behalf of uh, scientific uh, and knowledge service of the European Commission, which is in a way scientifically uh, underpinning the decisions uh, of the Commission and implementation in the member states. So then we work very closely with both, uh, with the European institutions, but also in, uh, with member states when it is uh, uh, in, in the implementation phase. So then let me do uh, two different remarks which uh, uh, are in a way stemming from our understanding of innovation systems and support of innovation systems and processes because that's a, that's a, a major part in this field because we support 20 different policies and obviously policy of regional urban development innovation is one of them. Um, let me do some um, first a more stratospheric remark and that's about globalization and innovation paradox. Um, we have uh, uh, globalization which is enabled by innovation. Uh, we have never had uh, uh, in, in the past of history of humanity everything so closed. All, all processes in the sociosphere among the people are so fast, are so close that it never been in the history. So this is, and this paradox is that this is actually the engine of the world which we have. We never been so wealthy as we are now. But this never been so gloomy atmosphere as, as it is now. So and here is the paradox that we need to, and we have this globalization which is empowered by innovation, which is empowered by new technologies, which is empowered by this networking which is so important. But at the same time this is in a way alienating the processes from people. And here, I think this is very important to realize this, uh, that we are living in invisible world. That uh, the, the, the perception of people, and this is stemming from different surveys, uh, is uh, that uh, the role and power of the citizen is somehow uh, diminished. That's the perception. But that the, at the same time, never in the history we had uh, uh, citizens and individuals so empowered by technologies to influence, uh, influence the policy and politics. So now I think that there is a challenge and there is also a huge opportunity because I think that we need to somehow make this paradigmatic shift of uh, decision making, consulting uh, with people and involving the citizens in, in all of this. And at the same time, we have, you know, the innovation is, uh, um, has also its own paradox in it uh, because we need to be innovative, we need to have this global vision. But at the same time, innovation is happening in the, uh, in the territory, in the, the very real, very small place and space. So then I would add to three T's of uh, Mrs. Buchmann, the fourth T, and that's the T for territory. Because the innovation is not happening in invisible stratosphere, it's happening in your city, in your street, in your neighborhood. You need to have uh, this ecosystem which is there, and that's why we are coming to the importance of this summit and to the importance uh, of the and the rebirth and, and the renaissance of the regional and urban policies at the European Union level. So then I think this is very important that we are, uh, we are uh, in a way focusing on, on this important element, that we are somehow highlighting this in our lives and highlighting also at the, at the European Union level. Because this uh, approach, uh, one fits all, uh, is not uh, anymore possible. It was not possible to do very tailor-made <clears throat> policy making and following because the technology was not there. But now the technology is there, so I think there is a big uh, opportunity for all of us to change the approach. So now let me come uh, closer to the ground and to, to show what, uh, what we are doing and what we have done and what can be eventually very useful for all of you if you are following this at the regional or uh, city level. First, let me say that I'm proud that we are co-authors of, of one of the most important policy innovations of the European Union, and that's the smart specialization. I think this is a, a concept which was co-developed by our colleagues in the policy DG, DG uh, uh, responsible for regional policy and uh, scientists uh, in a uh, joint research center and in the academia. <clears throat> so that was the conceptual part of, the, of something which is now 
a, a channel for 100 billions of euros uh, of investments into innovation in Europe. Now we are in the second phase, uh, and in the second phase is exactly in line with uh, Invest and Connect. Uh, so we created smart specialization platform where we are working with uh, almost 90% of those 275 regions which you mentioned. And <clears throat> for the first time in history we have a possibility, we have the common database of all 1,500 innovation priorities of those 275 regions. And we have already some good success stories of connecting people uh, from different regions uh, and creating the value chain of the production due to, uh, due to uh, exactly this. But we go even further because we know that uh, um, the, uh, the opportunities of the globalized uh, arena are bringing also challenges to get oriented in the, in the tsunami of information, data and instruments. So then, um, and I think that this autumn will be a big delivery date for, uh, for the Commission because we are producing uh, um, and creating the Knowledge Centre for Territorial Policies. Uh, the idea is to have one virtual space, one stop shop for uh, all data, information, models, instruments which are available to assess, to understand what is, uh, uh, how the, the innovation is working in the region but more importantly to benchmark and compare the regions across, uh, across the, the, uh, the board. You can have a flavor in this book which was published by a committee of region uh, at the occasion of the summit and if you see the maps indicators they are all powered by, uh, by the joint research center. But we go further and uh, we will have one uh, platform which is modeling platform for investments and these investments can be assessed at the, at the uh, neighborhood, city, region, macro region, member state or all European Union. So that is giving fantastic opportunity how to smartly invest and to seek for the best uh, economic value of it. Uh, we are publishing, are going to publish in uh, early October Culture and Creative City uh, Monitor, which is going to help all cities to uh, follow and benchmark how their creativity is, is boosting, how it's uh, working uh, in, in, the, uh, in, in the, the comparative mode with other European cities. And we are actually putting together 50 different existing uh, culture and creativity indices uh, to one monitor, which is actually going to be instrument for those cities, for 100, uh, 150 cities in the first wave. But we will, we will continue in this respect, because we think and we believe from understanding of this ecosystem that culture and creativity are extremely important elements. And this is one of other opportunities of European Union for once to take our cultural diversity as a motor, as the engine of, uh, of, the, of the development, not as an impetus uh, uh, to, to find our differences uh, and build, uh, build the borders, trenches and stay in our boxes forever. And the last instrument which is going to be launched in, uh, in, in the autumn is the instrument to monitor uh, technology innovation. So it can be done at the, at the level of technologies, but it can be done at the level of businesses, but also at the level of regions and cities. So then you may see how is your region performing or your city performing in comparison with the, with the other cities. So then these are just a few examples which are, uh, which are uh, stemming from our uh, knowledge work, which uh, we work across, uh, across the board uh, with many uh, research institutions also in the member states and worldwide.